Welcome everybody to our 90th webinar that we've we've been doing in this series. We started back in March of 2020, and we uh, we haven't taken. Uh, I think we took a little bit of a break during the during the holidays, uh, you know, in the winter of uh, 2020. But uh, we've been doing these every every week, sometimes two a week, and uh, been enjoying them and learning a lot. This is a this is a topic that has been on my list to do, and we've nibbled around the edges a little bit with some other uh, webinars, and we'll talk about those just a little bit. But um, wanted to get a little bit more deep into the to the discussion of of what do you think about and and how to do and ways to think through you know color you know the color screens and ways to use colors to to make your uh, on track experience better so we'll, uh, we'll that's where we're going to head and that's what we'll do and um you know we got uh, our co-host for today is is Robbie Yeoman. Robbie has been here uh, many times with us as, as a as a co-host and uh, uh, AIM Sports technician since 2008. He, well, deep into um, into our our custom wiring and 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 virtually everything we do around here, Robbie can can handle pretty much all of it. And he's gotten into these. Uh, this off-road racing stuff. So obviously I am a, a huge fan of that. And uh, if Robbie's going to do that, then he becomes even a <laughs> higher uh, person on my, on my, uh, I definitely got here, so. bit by the bug. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, off-road racing is a crazy thing. It's a, uh, Especially when you the, the Mexico the whole Mexico thing when you go down to Baja and, and do some of those it's even uh, it it takes it even to a new level so Robbie's into that and I and so we get to chat about that quite a bit and I really enjoy that as a, a retired off road racer of about twenty years so I really enjoy that whenever I hear his stories and he's out there not only building stuff for the uh, for the for the cars and some of the highest level of off road race trucks and of course the UTV stuff but uh, he also rides in the rides in the cars and races so it's uh, pretty cool Robbie tell us a little bit more about you as, as we kind of get ready to uh to roll here not that i uh i maybe have spoiled it all right you don't have much to add right and he's got the best beard best beard uh, between the two of us so right? oh, yeah between the two of us i think brick's got me beat <laughs> i i was gonna say the best beard at aim and then i thought no i you know brick i don't know i i, I haven't looked that closely so but it's just me and you uh well one of the i i don't know what to add that, that's pretty much it a passion for for motorsports uh a a a budding passion for the off-road market and uh and before working here it was my two passions were electronics and race cars <laughs> i just now have the ability to combine them and get paid to do it cool when you can uh when the when the stars align and you, and you can do something that you really like that's uh that's pretty cool that uh that you found the, the aim and that uh and that you're here because it's a it's a perfect fit for us as well obviously so very very cool very cool let's um uh again make sure if you have a, any questions that we uh that you throw them into the question and answer box uh, there will be some links that uh, that Emiliano is putting uh, in there. Today's presentation is in the chat box, uh, a link to the PDF of what we're going to present here today. It's 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 only a few slides. Most of it's going to be done live, but if you want to grab that, if um, if you, for those of you that are watching this uh, recorded version later on YouTube. All of the links that we're going to talk about and put into the chat box will be down in the description box uh, below, so you can grab those. Uh, we're going to have some uh, links to previous uh, webinars that we've done on on similar topics and the uh, the the configuration that Robbie is going to work in. We have that configuration if you want to download that and to, to be able to follow along with some of the stuff that he's showing and doing. And of course, the presentation. If you want, there are some links in the presentation as well, so that's uh, that'll all be available to you for those of you watching on YouTube later. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why this is an important uh, thing for us to talk about. The um, We've got these displays in front of us and, and ever since things really got started, you know, the, uh, the we used to race, you know, you, before these electronic, you know, gauges, if you were in a cart or a, you know, my off-road race cars, the ones that I had, uh, you know, for most of my career, you know, we had two lights, right? And one of them was low oil pressure and the other was hot, you know, high water temperature. Or when, they, when we were running air-cooled Volkswagens, it was when the alternator quit working. In other words, the fan turned off, right? So uh, we just had two lights and that was it, right? There was, and then we started to add a couple of analog gauges and, and, and uh, some of the stuff that we would do is, is if we had gauges, we would 
because you're so busy in a race car and it's so important that you need to focus to the track out in front of you, what you're doing, that uh, we would put those gauges and we would rotate those in funny ways where when the, when the analog gauges, everything was normal, everything was correct, everything was running well, the, the, the needles would all be pointing the same way. We're, what we're trying to do here today with some of our colors and LED lights flashing at the right time and, and, and all these different things really is approaching that same thing where, where it's really all about you as a driver being able to focus on the track and in the peripheral vision or a quick glance, know that everything on your, on your race vehicle is okay, whether it's a motorcycle or a cart or a road race car or an off-road truck. You, 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 you don't have time to sit there and stare at, a, at, at any type of a gauge. So what we really want to do is, is get the information to you only when it's needed and, and in a way that is um, you can see it out of your peripheral vision so you know that it's time to look down. Every driver is going to want something different. We have just in, in, in my position here and chatting with people and talking with different ways of doing things, I have some people that want to have a ton of information in, in front of them. You know, um, um, James Colburn has a, has a, um, a video that's linked on the screen here that uh, how much in-car data do you need? It's a great video. He talks about what he has done and that uh, there is one of the pages that he has that has the four tire tire pressures that he wants to bring up and maybe he's hit a curb or like he talks about an example he he runs over something and uh and for his mind to be focused he really really wanted to know that the that the tire pressures were okay and that he wasn't going to head into that big long sweeping corner and and have a you know with a big long left hander at the end and know that his right rear tire has lost a you know some pressure that that would not be a, a comfortable thing when he got there so he's got a screen and warning lights that tell him if his tire pressures drop below a certain thing somebody else that may be more than what they want so every driver is going to have a different view of what they really want to, to, to see and how it needs to be set up. We're going to talk about um, some different ways of doing it, uh, but everybody is going to be different. So keep that in mind, especially when Robbie jumps in there, he's going to show you some different options and it's kind of, kind of a cool thing. Um, I talked about the needles pointing in the same direction. That's, uh, you know, that's pretty, that was pretty standard when we had just analog display, you know, dashes. And then um, uh, when, when aim sports, dashes arrived we started we got the <clears throat> you know the micron series in carts and pretty soon they had some lights on them and uh boy the whole thing was about making those lights be what triggered you to look down and look at for, for certain information and then a while you know we went a while with just had the led lights that would maybe come on maybe a little bit of a message would come across but it was triggered with an led light so you knew when to look down and then you would know to look at a certain spot to see what your oil pressure was right the uh, mxl2 had a kind of a new tool that i think was the was a step in in this evolution of of things that we're doing and it had a red colored backlight that you could as a as a user use for some people used it when the oil pressure got down, you would, you would turn on that red light as well. It wasn't bright red, but it was enough to catch your eye. And, uh, and, and maybe an LED wasn't enough. And now maybe we've got a little bit more. A lot of people use that red backlight for a, a nighttime driving light and endurance racing and such, but we could also colorize red for, for, for an alarm. So uh, that was kind of that first step. And then we ended up with the, the TFT screens you know, in this MXM, MXX series of displays that we're going to talk about today, we had color screens, right? And um, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is very specific about different colors and ways to, to bring them in and take them away. Uh, but we've covered some of these tools, some of these things a little bit with previous webinars. And I just wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page that you know, we have covered some of these. So we're going to brush over some of these things a little bit today as we go depending on the on you know how much time but the uh i have linked in in the in, in here the some of the different ones we had a configuring alarm uh in race studio 3 software with matt uh, digging deeper in alarms with chris rollo status variables trigger commands and more with robinson and, and an entire um, webinar on understanding th these configurations and how they kind of work and put together there's just some of them uh, we'll have those links in the in the description as uh, of the YouTube video and they're in the chat box here. Some of the things that we've covered obviously were shift lights, alarms, status variables and trigger commands and icons. Those aren't necessarily the, 
making a decision to have a, a text change a color or a, or a light come on, but those are the tools that you would use to kind of set those up. So we have chatted about some of the back end work in, in the past. Okay, so those, uh, those are available to you. Another thing I just wanted to mention before I hand it over to, um, to Robbie to start kind of going deeper into um, you know, building one and talking about one is AIM Sports has an FAQ page. And, uh, and I don't think, uh, I think some of you know it's there, but I, there, maybe some of you don't know it's all that, uh, know it all that well. Uh, AIM Sports website, FAQ, there's a link down here below, but you can find it from the main website uh, everywhere. It's been linked in the chat box as well. Here's three documents that I just did a quick search. Well, one of the things I added in the last uh, six months or so was a search, a search bar in that FAQ where you, I just typed in color. And these were three of the, the top documents that I have, you know, how to customize your, your, your page um, in, from Ray Studio 3 side, what kind of alarms can I set up? There's an entire document there and uh, alarm light signal configuration. And, you know, can, how do I bring a signal in and have it come into my, uh, into a gauge, right? So there's all sorts of uh, documents, not just on this subject, but uh, on very, very many subjects uh, and all searchable in the, in, at that FAQ page. So uh, take a look at that. Uh, I think you're gonna find that there's some, some real help there. So what we're gonna do is, is, is uh, perfect this kind of a screen capture here of where we're gonna go. You, you can kind of see a page that Robbie is gonna work on here in just a moment. He's kind of set up a screen. Uh, Robbie will introduce it a little bit, but um, uh, just different ways of thinking about it. Again, everybody's going to be a little bit different. Some people, Robbie's got a process here he's going to explain, but uh, you know, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. And, um, but it's, the, it's to get the juices flowing and get you thinking about different ways of, uh, of warning you as a, as a driver while you're out there and uh, making sure that you get the information you need in a timely manner and be able to make good decisions. So with that, Robbie, I will, uh, I think I need to, I will stop sharing mine. And Robbie's going to take over the sharing. And then you will see Robbie's screen here in a moment. And we will, right. Robbie will take over and that and talk about uh, the configuration. Again, this configuration is linked um, in the, um, you can download this configuration if you want to play with it after the, after the live webinar and tinker around with it and see, see what he did and watch the video back and, and, and make some of the changes as he does it as well. So, so Robbie, why don't you go ahead and let me bring you over here so I can see you better. You go ahead and start to chatting about how do you, did you pick these displays and then, and then how do you colorize them? And, 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 uh, but, but first a little bit of uh, background about what are these displays? What are you, what are you looking at? And why did you select these uh, particular ones? Well, first I, I usually run two pages. I, I personally find that two pages works for me. Um, it's easy to go back and forth. I mean, just switching a button switches the page. So I personally like just having two pages if I can get away with it. Multiple pages, it, it, it can work. It's just sometimes it, it can become a little bit uh, uh, problematic to get to the page that you want, which which there are some things in the software will address that that help that out. So for me, there's there's a driving page and then there's a check page. My driving page is what the driver needs to see um, and the biggest font that's possible. So for this, this is my driving page. Simple, elegant. There's not a whole lot going on. This is what this is what my driver needs to to get the job done. Uh, but what I'd like to do is is show you guys a little bit of the flexibility in customizing these pages. So uh, if I could jump in for a quick second. And Robbie, this is a this is a UTV uh, based uh, gauge is. here that, that we're looking at. And UTVs have a you know, if you're racing at Daytona. And you get up on the banking. You have a little time to look down, and you can you can find some different things in the, in the off road world, in the UTV world. You know they're either bouncing or they're turning or they're rolling or yeah. So uh, uh, maybe you use a slightly different look and feel in a, in a UTV than uh, than you might on a on a big track. So uh, might be uh, these these numbers may or may not work for folks that are road racers, but uh, they might. Right. right, big big font. It's it's what you need when your when your eyes feel like they're they're vibrating to the frequency of the, the, the rough section. I mean, and I hear the same, the, 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 the guys that do oval track racing do the, basically the same thing. They're so busy, probably 80% of the track, that they really only have time for a glance. So this is also works for them pretty well too. 
Um, okay. So, so what I like to do is make it as as visible as possible, and that's that for me is like white white on black. Um, I personally like the the contrast for it. So by default, the uh, these are actually like a gray undertone. So it might be a little bit harder to recognize them, but you can you can change everything uh, relating to the digital font, the label font, and the unit font in this little section right here. And I think it's a maybe an underused. Uh, portion of the software right now. I agree. So if you wanted to, you could click um, on the selected area. And if we wanted to change the fight, the font, I personally, I love this Euro stylish. It's, it's clean, it's sharp, it has nice edges. Um, and, and I don't always use it for this page, but on my driver check page, it's what everything is because it gives, it gives a really good spacing between the, the numerical values. So for me, visually, this, this really works well. Um, on the larger page, I might go with a, a more bold font, like that uh, Dino, Dino, Dinot bold. Um, but if I want the high contrast, I go white on black, and everything here can be sized with this window right here. So if I wanted to reduce the size of this, we could set this to, uh, let's say, 100, and we'll just give it a preview here. And it, it can, you can increase or decrease the size of, of this font. The, the firmware will do a really good job if you max out the font. Um, and the software only allows you to go up so high. So at 149, uh, as the number grows, it will naturally shrink the value down. So if you're looking at EGT, for example, and I'm expecting a four digit value, um, this, is, this is what I can expect to see. But if I have a decimal place in there and a four digit value, then it will naturally shrink itself as it gets to that fifth, uh, that fifth position, nice. just so that it fits in this area. But then you can also adjust the size of your label font. Um, maybe you don't want to see it. It can be disabled. Um, but just, just this type of flexibility gives not only um, you exactly what you want to see in the, in the best way, but it also gives your, your display a, a unique look and feel to it. So it can be your display, not just this, this standard display. Um, what I'd like to do is go and talk about a little bit about grouping. For me, uh, I, I, I read up a, a whole paper about why uh, my phone numbers are the, the length that they are and how they're grouped in the same way. And that, that type of grouping and that type of uh, memory recall is kind of how I, I approach my, my data aspect. So I have grouping areas. I put all my temperatures uh, together and then I put all my pressures together and I also color ID them. So then when I quickly glance down, I know that these are my, my uh, axle temperatures right here. We're looking at the outer CV joints on the, on the cars. They're, they're pretty much endurance cars that are put through the ringer. So axle temperatures are, are huge. And if you can get ahead of an axle braking and just replace it, it's, it, uh, it's worth its weight in gold. So this is the only, that's the reason why these are colored outside of it. I know that it's not related to my engine. All my engine temperatures are blue. Um, and then all my pressures are orange. And for the other things I use white. So this way, when I quickly glance down, I know that what the sections of, uh, of, of the display that I need to be paying attention to. If I'm worried about water temp, I'm gonna look down, I'm already gonna chunk this information out of my visual parameter. I'm not even gonna pay attention to it because I'm not worried about my axles. Um, and so that leaves really only these four options for me to, to like quickly navigate to. And on a busy screen like this, I, those nanoseconds of split decisions um, are, are crucial. Um, the font I, the I like that, Robbie. I, I, the, um, we used to do all sorts of things, kind of placing things in different spots based on what it is. But boy, having this, uh, the ability to colorize the name and have them group that way, and you just know that within a, 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 a 15, 20 minutes of looking at it, you know that the green is the axle temperatures and the pressures are orange. And the, I think that's just a fantastic way of doing it. It's quick and quick and easy and, uh, and your muscle memory very quickly gets you to understand what it is. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, the, the font, uh, Jeff asks what font I'm using. Uh, for the numerical values, I use Euro Stylish. Uh, I think when they're smaller, it gives it gives that really good uh, separation between the digital values. If you went with the uh, one from the previous screen, it kind of makes it a little bit larger. Um, and it, it, it can, for me, it's it, they get close together and it's hard to differentiate, you know, eights and nines that are right next to each other. Uh, but it could just be that my eyes aren't very good. 
personal preference too, right? On top so, of all. So I, I usually small smaller fonts. I'll, I'll put on a Euro stylish. Um, and uh, there, there's a couple other features on this display page. For example, uh, you can also position the the data value. So right now it's got a right alignment, but I can change this to a center alignment. And it, it just moves the digital uh, the digital font into the center position, or you can do a left alignment. And on a page like this, it's you're not going to really notice a huge difference. It might be it might it might look good to have everything in the center, but on a page like this, for example, I, I put all of these right in the center, so that it, it seems to work really well. The spacing on it uh, by default, everything is is positioned on the right. Especially with, such a, especially with such a large view. The mm -hmm. um, Ben asked a question that I think maybe this is a good time to just make sure we answer. Is that page only in MXG 1.2? Tell no. them what you're, what you're actually building here and where you think these pages will show up. Uh, this is for a PDM um, installation that we did. So this is available on, on the six inch displays uh, that we offer. So that would be MXPs, it's it, MXGs, MXSs, all the 1.2 family line has this option as well as the 1.0 family um, because there's 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 no icons on this to, to be managed. So it, it's, it works for all the color management displays. And your other page though is, is maybe limited to a, uh, some, different, uh, some different gauges because of the icons. Mm -hmm. The 1.2 family lines. Just the 1.2 um, because of the icons, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, so this is this is just a grouping method that that I have found works really really well for for me personally and and I, I encourage all of you to think about what what makes the most sense to you as the person looking at the data how do you want to see uh, this information do you want to group your temperatures or do you want to put your critical things in in certain areas um, it or a combination of all of them so let's see um, some of the other features um, you can change the background. So if it was something that you really wanted to pay attention to, and I, I personally don't use this one much, but you can actually change this and then make it give it a, a you know, a, a little bit better of a font. And it, mm -hmm. it gives you an area to pay critical attention to. So now when yeah, when I, my eyes come down, this is the first thing I'm gonna see. Even if I don't wanna yeah. see it, it's gonna be what's, <laughs> what's blaring at me. The pink elephant syndrome type of mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's there. So there is just such an, an amount of personalization in this, like what is going to work for you? And that's, I think, what everyone needs to, uh, to personally think about. Uh, but to get to make all of this work, as you can see, I have a, a ton of icons down at the bottom. So I wanted to take a moment and just touch on the icon management of the 1.2 systems. And in this case, uh, I have a, a battery low uh, option and the icon management is it's a pretty straightforward process. If we wanted to make a new one, we click on this add new icon. Um, you can't alarm, uh, Art asks if, if you can alarm the background and, and unfortunately you can't alarm the background. It's, it's just a, a preset setting, so it will always be yellow. But what I can do is manage the font and I, I will get into that in, a, in just a bit. So as we set an icon, we have uh, an option to select an icon and we have coloring predefined and custom. The custom will allow you to add a, a BMP, a GIF, TIFF, JPEG uh, file. So you can see I already, already have a few of them in here and you can just click on it and, and add it and it'll, it'll size it down and allow you to use it in a, a custom format. The predefined ones are color specific. So these are red, they're this, this is red, this is red, this is uh, smoke or see-through um, and the same as this. So if I, uh, wanted to use, let's say, a battery indicator, and I could say if my battery is less than 11 volts. Man, I can't do this one today. I'll do 10 volts. Um, then to show this alarm, if it's not, we're going to select a smoked background. and um, it will always show this unless the battery stipulation is met, at which point it will illuminate a red icon. So you get kind of the old school dash look where you, you know the, uh, the, the check engine lights there, but it's not illuminated yet, but you can still see it. So that, that's, you know, this is an option, it does not have to be applied. It can just be black and then illuminate when it's, when it's available. 
and this fits into the, the um, this coloring of this ECU battery coming up red fits into that process that we talked about earlier, which is if you're running along, you're, you really want to be focusing on the track and in your peripheral vision, if everything is what it's supposed to be, you'll, you'll notice that, right? If all of a sudden something changes to a red, that's going to trigger your eye to go down. That's why these icons are, are such a valuable and, and helpful tool. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the... Uh, the coloring options, they can be color, color choice. So you have oh. a color wheel that can be selected. Um, and if I wanted it to be red or if I wanted it to be blue or if I wanted it to be purple, nice. I, can, I can actually select the, the color value and the same with, with the, the off stipulation. So this, this gives you a lot of flexibility when you're doing maybe like a, a turbo map. Um, it, it's, it's telling you the boost map that you're you're enabling. You have a low, a medium, and a high, and it can be green, yellow, and red. It doesn't have to be these predefined colors. It can be whatever colors uh, make the most sense for you. And you can have a aggressive colors for an aggressive map. And um, so to do a a battery um, alarm, what 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 I like to see as a battery alarm, it requires a status variable. So here you'll see I have a battery status variable. And I set it equal to when it's on. And I'll show you my status variable in just a second. So if we come over to this battery issue, it allows me to set a, uh, a nested function that says, you know, basically, if my engine RPM is greater than 1,500 and my ECU and my ECU battery is greater than 16 volts or my ECU battery is less than 11 volts. I want to know in both directions. Is my alternator overcharging um, or are we undercharging? Did we lose a belt? What, what happened? I want to be notified on my icon. So this creates just a simple binary, a, a yes or a no. Are these conditions met? Yes. Are they, um, are they not met? No. With that, I can then make an icon. And that icon is simply set to when, when the status variable is on, trigger this icon. So we can go into um, the display now. And you can just, any of these options, you can see the, the red highlight here. Any of these options are available, and it gives you the list of your icons. So we can pick our battery. If you double click on it, you can edit it right from here. And then it just it's positioned in your overlay. So we built a, we built a, a, a display and grouped and chunked data. We've changed the colors to make it easily identifiable. We've done a status variable and a, a, an icon for managing um, information that I don't necessarily want on the LEDs. I just want to know whether it's active or not. But you would have the option as well as building an LED if you want, if it's something that's really important, oil pressure, right? You, yeah, well, the oil pressure light will come on, the, the text will change that it's low oil pressure, and you can have LEDs come on if, if you want it as well. Right, so. and, and that's actually, that, that bring, brings me right into my next, uh, my next uh, teaching point, I guess, uh, is, is the alarm management. Uh, I, I don't necessarily use LEDs in a traditional way. Uh, I have multiple alarms that, that I stagger, uh, and especially for, for belt temperature. And in the, in the, the side-by-sides, this one is, is a CVT belt-driven, so it, I don't have an RPM on, my, uh, on the top because it, the RPM is, I, I can't, there's no shifting. So, uh, but belt temp is, incredib is incredibly critical to these guys. Uh, it will tell them if they can get after it or if they need to pace themselves and let that thing cool off because if they burn the belt, they're not going anywhere. So we set up uh, a two-stage or sometimes even a three-stage warning. And for this one, we set the, um, the belt temperature to uh, 190 degrees. This is my trigger right here. I want to know when my belt temperature gets to 190 as, as a warning. So all I'm going to do when this stipulation is met is uh, change the display measure of the belt temperature to yellow. And what that will do is on my display page where I have this belt temperature, it will, it will physically change the digital font value to a yellow background. And that for me just dr sucks my eyes right into there. When, when that happens, you're just like, something's changed. What is it? I need to figure it out. 
I think that's so valuable because again, it's peripheral, right? Mm -hmm. And those numbers are big enough. You have your gauge mounted in the right spot where you can see it. Sometimes if it's down here in the center, it may just barely catch your eye. But if it's in front of you, those numbers change. And now you know that those big numbers are yellow. That means you got to, yeah, I can keep going, but, but uh, boy, if I keep hammering on, it's going to turn red probably. And, uh, and at some point it's going to fail. So uh, colors in, in situations like this are just ideal to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all about getting the information as easily and as fast as possible. And, and anything you can do to make that happen is going to free up your mental faculties to, to continue racing at uh, like on the, on the cutting edge. You're just like, look down. Okay. My, my warning light went on, but I'm, I'm in the chase for, for second place right now. So I need to, I just need to keep on it. Um, and hopefully I can get this belt temperature in this example to, to cool down later. Uh, and, and belt temperatures in, in, in the CUTV is very, very uh, parallel with, let's say water temperatures in a road road race car, right? You're, you're up there and you're drafting like crazy and your and your water temperature is coming up. It, you, it could slowly come up and go to yellow. Okay. Well, I, I've only got two laps left. Do I, do I pop out and give it a little bit more air or, or am I just two laps into it? Do I need to go ahead and get, start getting air now? So I have something left at the end. So the, you know, this, this theory that uh, Robbie is talking about is used in, in your situation, right? Yeah. In, in, in the perfect example, road America on the, on the, the the back straight i mean it, or the front straight i mean either either one of those long mile long <laughs> straights uh you're going to want to suck in on someone and you're going to want to utilize that draft so coming popping out and getting air it's nice to know you know you know where you're at on the the straightaway so if you're about to break out anyways you might want to just stay tucked uh so that's that's why the warnings and the critical alarms are are really valuable to me so now that we've addressed the the warning, we can address like a, a critical uh, event. So the belt temp high, this is the same situation. It's just a 10 degrees higher limitation. So at 200, I still want to change the, uh, the belt temperature yellow. And the only reason I don't go to red is because I have a hard time distinguishing red on black backgrounds. Um, so, so it's like, I, I can see it, but it, it takes more mental effort for me to like focus on it and, and read what the number is. Whereas uh, yellow on black seems to work really well for me. But I also want to implement a message. And now I want it to say belt temp high. So that will happen in the info bar. In this info line, it will pop up with a warning text that will say, you know, your belt temp is now high. So I now have a yellow digital value. I have a warning. And if I wanted to on top of that, I could also add an LED. So I could, and this is where we can we can set up, uh, you know, slow blinking or fast blinking alarms if it's if it's something that I really need to catch my attention. It's a little too big. Yeah. One of the questions while you're setting that up, Tice asks, can you use shift lights as a temp bar for the belt belt temp range? I don't, I do not think that is available to us uh, as of right now. The 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 built in. RPM light that can only be used for RPM and for uh, um, predictive lap timing right now. Right. Uh, well, I think I think we're doing pretty good on time. So uh, as if I had to solve this problem, uh, a math channel could be possibly used. So you could make a linear correction for the the belt temperature, and then I can change the function to engine RPM, and now I can put it in my um, my shift lights, uh, my shift okay. light settings. So Fantastic um, a workaround solution. Uh, nicely done. Nicely so I have done. this now linear correction, and then I just would set the values at, at the temperature requirements that they needed. So a little, a little planning ahead, a little thinking ahead, and and boom, we uh, we have created something that would Robbie has probably done in UTVs. <laughs> 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 Sounds like from the way he jumped right in there. Um, so these, and it's because that shift little... light, by the way, just internally, that shift light is is looking for an RPM value that's coming at it. And since you did the math channel and called it an RPM channel, now it's available to be placed onto the shift light. So a good good way of thinking through the process and making it work. Nice. So let's see. Uh, we have the the battery issues. We've done the shift lights and alarms. Um, there's one thing I would like to discuss, and that's the priority of these messages. It's uh. 
it's incredibly difficult to make sure that your or it's incredibly important to make sure that your priorities are well respected. So if I have, for example, two LED ones right here or two LED fives right here, I have a problem. If both of these are active, then which one is showing me the LED? And that's going to be the one with the highest priority. So we have this priority indicator. And the same holds true for the belt temp warning and belt temp high. Because I'm having the digital uh, the digital measures show yellow, if I wanted this one to show red um, and it had a lower priority, this would always be true with a higher priority. And my belt temp high would never would never get a chance to actually activate. So, so respecting this priority indicator for alarms that share similar uh, components is is just something you need to watch out for that was back to, to in my mind when i first started playing with that the, to, i don't know why it, because now I, I i think about it deeper and this makes all the sense in the world but for some reason i had it thinking it was the other way and it took me a little while to get my to make sure i put uh, it, it's basically you're stacking the lights on top of each other is the way i i began to think about it that belt temp high it's higher in the list, so it, it it'll be the one that lays over the top of the one that's below, and both are on, right? Mm -hmm. And that uh, that helped me understand that. And and the, these priorities are are very very critical if you use a lot of LEDs to make sure the right ones are up at the right time. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, let's see. So we have our our alarms all done. Um, we have our new belt temperature. <laughs> as our shift lights. Nice, uh, nicely done. We've done our, our icon management. What I'd like to, to take a moment to discuss is the trigger command section. This trigger command section I use, um, since we have this new go-to page number, it, it changed the, the amount that I had to touch the, the digital dash. So it was able to keep my eyes on, on the, the crash bar or, or on the steering wheel. It just, it kept me engaged with the vehicle. Um, and what I, what I do in, in this specific situation is that the, uh, the pages are defined by like when I need to see the information. So I have this driver page and I have it set up so that when GPS speed is greater than eight miles an hour, it shows me my driver page. So my driver page being the, uh, um, the large, uh, large font, page with minimal information and and it automatically does that when the car stopped it's showing me a system check page when the car is moving faster than eight miles an hour it's showing me a driving page and that that requires no uh no input on my part except for building this initially it's going to naturally change but i'm also not looking at my uh, cv temps on this so when i put another command in there for my page one i put in page one if my ir temps um my status variable that I created for my IR temps is on, then uh, it will naturally, it will automatically go to this page because it has a higher priority. This go to page number thing is to me is, is one of the biggest, strongest, powerful things we have available to us that, that is not being used by many. And uh, so I, I'm glad you're, you're going into this uh, with some detail because uh, I, I have always had multiple pages and it's always been a, a paddock page, a qualifying page and a, and a race page, right? And, uh, and because the driver needs to see different things at different times. And, uh, and I just think this is just a, a great tool that uh, hopefully more people will use. I hope so too, because Ben, ben asks, is, is this, I'm sorry, Ben, ben asks, is this go-to page only in the PDM, uh, not in MXG 1.0? I think it's across the board, isn't it? Or is it only the 1.2 devices? I would think 1.2 devices, um, to be quite honest. Yeah. I right. would have to double check. Looks um, like Emiliano's about to answer that. So maybe uh, we will know for sure in a moment. And will this information work on the uh, the Evo 4S and GS dash? It, it has the potential to... Uh, to do a similar function. So with the uh, the Evo 4S and the GS dash, you're using a dot matrix display. There's no there's no color embedded in. So all of the color things that we're doing here um, don't necessarily cross over into it, but it does have a multi-stage uh, color backlight. So you can use the backlight, um, I believe, to 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 control the uh, the different alarms or or the the navigating of the pages. But you won't be able to change the digital font any any specific color. All right. Once you built so, multiple pages, I suppose, right? And had different pages come up for different things and be become very uh, complex, I suppose. So um, Jeff Wasilico wanted to see all the different, uh, the 
structure that we use and why we had this internal limitation of uh, available alarms or available uh, available status variables. Uh, and this architecture was completely reworked um, for the PDM and the, the 1.2 system. So uh, in the beta, you can, uh, which is what we're using today, is uh, is a totally different status variable page than and what most people are look, used to seeing in the, the standard. So this, these have like a Boolean um, uh, workflow mechanisms. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I can set and or, um, and I can actually do nested uh, and or equations. So with just and and or, and being able to stagger them in like a nested format, you can do some pretty, pretty uh, in, ingenious things like you just want this to turn on but it requires all of these other things to be true these and or statements are going to allow you to combine all of that into a single logic statement it's either yes or no so Which here then I'd reduces put, the number of status variables and math channels and alarms and alerts that we really even need because we can do a lot of it here good point so the uh, uh for the ir temperature uh this is how i i direct my my page uh, to go to, to to show me the IR temperature page. Uh, I set all of the IR temperatures to or equations, you know, my right rear, my left rear, my right front, or my left front. Uh, if they're greater than 300 in any of these sensors, it's going to bring me to my, um, my page that shows me that information, at which point I can have alarms and display measures that, that help me navigate the screen. But ideally, if it goes to that page and we're, when we're driving, I know what I know what the cause was, and I'm going to be looking at that IR. So it's just another way for me to process information um, faster than than normal. And in this case, you're you're a you're you're, you're code driving in a in a UTV. In this particular car, do you have two displays in front of you, or just the one in front of you, and the driver doesn't have anything? Uh, on this car, it's just the one. Perfect. Some drivers may want their lap time or their speed or their RPM. You know, these things, like you say, are CVT. So that there's not a whole lot the driver really needs to look at as long as you're there and you, you've got an intercom and you're you're relaying the information he needs to know, I suppose, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, that's that's essentially my job is to hold on and and give him information to that allows him to drive as fast as he possibly can yeah, without killing the car. So yeah. you're, you're helping him on those bits. Perfect. Perfect. Finishing is is first. Finish yeah. first is second. <laughs> so if we had a, uh, um, I guess we could probably address some questions. I got a little bit there of was, a uh, There was one, uh, Jeff asked uh, on the diagnostic page, what was the font that you had there? I, you, maybe you already had that one, but. Uh, that one uh, is what the was Euro the, stylish. The, the Euro stylish. And then uh, uh, that one was in, a, uh, can it be set up for a color change? The name change, and I don't. I think I think uh, where it says fuel P or, or LFIR, can that change uh, with with uh, with something or just the value of the channel? Absolutely. Um, so we can we can change. Uh, basically, we'll go through it. Uh, the channels that I have, they are actually uh, labeled RRIR. But in the case of my uh, channel expansion, if I had to label this like left front. Now I have this left front here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when information comes from the ECU, it's got an ECU header on it, or or it's just it's an odd uh, acronym uh, that that just maybe doesn't make sense to you. Maybe you don't like H, or maybe you don't like ECT. Yeah. So water temp is preferred, or H two O T. You can come in and change the uh, the the value of the. The, the, the short on, name, as right. we call it, right? Yeah, the short and, name. And, and now that short name, as the water temperature or the axle temperature goes up, you, we can change that 9999 to being yellow. Can we change the actual channel name itself to also go yellow, or is it uh, hmm. hard-coded green all the time? Uh, no, the, the code is actually right here. So um, when I select this box, it gives me the digital font, the label mm -hmm. font, and the unit and the, font uh, and available. So that's basically the digital font is the mm -hmm. digital value that we're, that we're but displaying. But I think the question is, if the axle gets too hot, can can the LFIR also turn to yellow Change with temperature? The yellow? Uh, no, the, okay, the colors are, are, are predetermined uh, here. Change the, the only thing I can color. do is, is change okay. the digital font, and that's done um, in the, the alarm. So we're, we're basically telling the display measure to activate a color. OK, and that I think the number is the right one to change anyway, but the, the question was there. So. Uh, 
looking through here. We answered, uh, we answered a lot of these. Any chance we can get a more flexible diagnostic page? I'd love to see more fields in a wider center section and where the gear indicator. The bottom line there is what, what about, uh, and you and I may not have the answer to this, but uh, more additional pages coming up that are built or uh, user definable uh, display pages in time. I do not know that answer. Do you have, uh, have you talked to somebody that's uh, a little deeper? Yeah, actually we have, we have some really unique pages uh, that are, are being developed right now. Um, and they are completely different than anything that we've had uh, previously. So if, if we can look at all of the, the pages, these are all the icon pages that we have available. Uh, and then these would be all the, the set pages. Now, this one is, a, it's for the PDM. So these are all specific to being able to fit on the six inch PDM display. There's different ones for the 10 inch display. Um, so, so in this case, they, they are dependent. So you can see here, I have some kind of spacey looking ones that I can, I can navigate around with and I can still do all of the same digital font, um, label font and positioning that I could do with the others. So as of right now, user, user defining that your own is not, not available to us, but um, I would suggest if there's something that you, that, uh, that is just, we just do not have something that fits what you're after. And I've had some folks talk about endurance racing specific kind of a layout. And um, uh, if, if you have something like that, let us know, maybe you know, draw it up real quickly and take a snap, you know, snap a picture of it, uh, do it on a whiteboard and, and, and send it to us and, and give us some ideas of what you think you might want. And uh, I'm sure the folks in Italy can probably help us out. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think we can make, we can, I mean, we're, we're happy to, to, to get try. you guys, yeah, yeah to try um, um, and get you guys exactly what you want. Yeah, uh, in the question, Robbie, there's one that's uh, from Tim that says, can the brightness be turned down below 20% on an MXG 1.2? Pretty detailed question, but uh, had driver complaints during endurance races when it goes from daylight to dark that, that you know, the, it does drop some, right? But uh, he's wondering if there's a way we can maybe minimize that illumination a little bit more. Uh, in, the, in the live measures, when you're connected to a device, and we have a device connected here. We can we can actually go into the device and set the uh, the daytime nighttime uh, mode selection. So there's there's a photosensitive light meter in the uh, the MXGs that will basically pull how dark or how light the the current area is. Just like your cell phone does, it gets brighter when you walk outside and it gets dimmer when you come in. But we can actually tune the threshold at which you um, these kind of trigger. So at this type of intensity, we we want it to switch to night mode. In night mode, we want 30% or 10% of the intensity of the display. So you can you can trim that way. It's a little um, fixed I, I guess once you set it that that's that those Works are going to be your thresholds time, yeah. and that's that's how it's going to work but what there there's an auto setting uh, and by default it, it seems like it's not working for for this customer so we may want to go in and set a a custom one but the uh, the auto setting does a great job it, it it modulates its intensity based on the the photosensitive light meter and the other thing is maybe uh, if you bring back up your uh, your display that you had just a second ago, um, one of those two, that, like this one here, it's got basically a black background. If you're in endurance racing and you and make a night mode one that doesn't have the you know more of a bright white background but has the black background, I think would help a lot for an endurance racers in the at three in the morning. Absolutely, and that's another great thing for there you uh, go for go to pages. <laughs> When the illumination gets to 20%, go to this page three, which is your night mode. Right, right, right. A, a night mode page. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you, and at worst, it, and that would be using the sensor to switch to the next display mode. Mm -hmm. At worst, you use one of your analog channels to flip a switch when it's night and and that that switch is toggling something, right? Where you can then alarm off of it and, and set it to go to night. So just a couple ways around it, Tim, if that, uh, if that works for you. So you could go into um, basically the, the channel selection, and then it's under the internal, and you'll see that there's a luminosity channel. And this luminosity channel has a percentage. It's going to take a little bit of playing around to figure out what percentage you're, you're working with, but uh, you can come in and set the percentage to like 80%. And now it'll go to a nighttime page for you. So if you wanted to play with different pages for day and night, that would be, that would be one way to do it. Perfect. Perfect. The, um, uh, we had a uh, Richard ask earlier if you could import the PDM webinar configuration. Um, that 
that has been uh, the link for the what Robbie is working around in has been uh, linked in the chat, but it only is going to work in Race Studio 3 beta. So keep that in mind. If those of you that are either live here and you've grabbed that and you try to import it into the production version, it, it, PDMs are only available in the beta right now. Uh, so if you're watching this later in YouTube, make sure you have the beta version of the software and then you can grab this uh, and, and do a lot of the stuff that Robbie has done here. Mm -hmm. But if, if not, you know, create a, a display of uh, any other type in, in, in the standard you know, Race Studio 3 production configurations. And a lot of the same things Robbie is doing will work there as well, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was there was a, a Jay in the, in the chat uh, was, wondering what what could be done if the the screen isn't right in front of you so you, you're not really using those peripheral visions um and it's just this just goes to the the testament of the, the hardware is there there is a different way to tackle any of these these types of situations so if if you don't have a direct shot at the uh the display page where or it's difficult for you to glance over you don't think that you will see the colors changing um there is always the leds right we can we can set these LEDs to fast blink, and I find that they they do a great job of of grabbing attention. So you have this fast blinking LED that that is now alerting you that something's wrong and you need to glance over, or you can set a digital output. So this this goes to Thesis, uh, um 21 watt uh, oil pressure light that was that was shining at him. You can actually do a similar thing. So if I wanted to, I could come in and set the uh, Oh, the PDM doesn't allow it, but uh, I could set a digital output on the on the in the alarm section, and I can basically activate a LED light that is as big as you want it to be, Jay. I mean, it could it could just give the guy a suntan if you needed him to shut it down. Yeah, wow, you, you boom, blast you right, and then, <laughs> and then even if it's in the middle, then maybe maybe you end up having to maybe point it a little bit at the driver. The LEDs do have a pretty wide cone of brightness, but if it's uh, if it's way down or way low, maybe you end up having to point the gauge a little bit. So, right. so since this is the a PDM, um, I don't have the digital outputs because I have, have so many power <laughs> outputs, right? So <laughs> exactly. I can I can come in and write the same type of logic and say. Basically, when my oil pressure is, let's see, when my oil pressure is less than 110, <laughs> and my engine temperature or engine RPM is less than Than 1500. Now I'm just going to activate a a power output that this can drive an LED for me. Now uh, I can drive it with 10 amps of current or one amp of current. It just depends on what you need it to do. And this would Perfect. be a similar similar setup if we had the digital outputs available. Just be under the shift lights and alarms. Any other questions? We've uh, I think we've covered all of the questions that are in there. Um, I haven't been watching the chat very much. The questions and answers have been pretty busy, so it's uh, been a little bit hectic. Um, perfect. Anything else you have there, Robbie, as we kind of start to wind this one down? No, I mean, I, I just enjoy answering all your guys' questions. It, <laughs> it, it really helps uh, kind of stimulate my, my creativity, too, if you guys have a problem, and I, I, that's what I love solving is problems. It it's it it brings us back. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my my screen, Robbie. Okay. And yes, and let's share that one. Let's get rid of Robbie out of there. Perfect. It, it comes back to the uh, you know something that I mentioned at, at one of the earlier slides, which was th there are so many different options out there that um, oops that. Um, this is very will be very personalized. It, we from just from reading the questions and, and seeing the chat and some of the different things we had, the uh, each driver will want and need different approaches, right? And and each form of motorsports will. If you're on a motorcycle or you're on a you know a rally car or an off road truck, a road course Porsche, yeah, everybody's going to need a little bit of something different. Uh, you've been working with a couple of guys with you know mountain bikes. Right, uh, their their need is going to be different than what uh, than than somebody in their spec Miata is going to be. So keep that in mind. Well, this entire hour was really dedicated around just 
throwing out some ideas, uh, getting your minds to work and just think through and go, well, I, I, I like that idea, although maybe that one doesn't work for me. Maybe I'm, you know, I have a, a, a green blue problem with, you know, with color blindness, whatever it happens to be. So oh, yeah, we're gonna stay away from that. All about trying to just make sure that we throw out some ideas and and uh, and make your your um, your dash logger presentation you know much work much better for you. So re really important to us that uh, that you get the most out of this that you can. So keep that in mind. Uh, I appreciate it, everybody. The questions were very very good and uh, lots of uh, lots of great ideas in there. So the. Um, the, the next thing, as we're kind of winding this down, this, this video will be up on YouTube. Um, it'll be our 155th video that we have up there, um, the 89th of, uh, uh, of these that we've been doing so far. Um, it'll be up there on, on, on YouTube within a couple of hours. And, uh, and all of the links that we, we talked about and, and, and maybe even add a few more based on some of the questions and some of the things that happened will be uh, in the description box uh, for, for that. So take a look at that. And all of our previous webinars are all there ready for you to take a look at it, including some of the ones we mentioned today. So keep that in mind. We're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics is you know, what we like to say. Um, it's that time of year. We're out there. A lot of us are getting out to the racetrack. And um, so we love seeing you guys out there. I, we know you're out there, certainly, and uh, we can only be at so many. Uh, but uh, we love to be out there. And if you can't find us at, at a racetrack that's near you, give us a call at the 800 number. Uh, love to love to give you some give you some help and make sure that uh, this works in the best way possible. I'm going to go on my second trip of the year this coming weekend. So looking forward to that. I will be at uh, Autobahn. Uh, Speedway outside of Chicago for a radical event. Uh, looking forward to that on Saturday and uh, be there to help a bunch of uh, different radical owners uh, and, and uh, a, a trip that I haven't made in a long time. So if, uh, looking forward to that. So that'll be fun. The, um, our, our next series of webinars, the, um, we've done a lot of webinars recently and, and, and on purpose because of questions that people have and just different things. Uh, about fairly technical items, you know, how to set up your, your TFT screens and, and how to use colors better, how to hook up your you know, CAN devices, how to, to fine tune your Wi-Fi, you know, lots of technical things we've talked about. And, um, and one of the things I wanted to do is go through another phase of, of data analysis. And, uh, and, and the way that we're going to do that is I've got four of uh, the, the nation's leading driver coaches that are going to come and join us. And, um, uh, I'll share with you the first couple of them. Uh, Thomas Merrill is going to be with us a week from today, uh, a young man that has been um, uh, been doing very, very well in, in his motorsports career, uh, spends a lot of time in the Trans Am series here, uh, here in the States. Uh, Thomas is going to join us uh, next week. Uh, the week after that will be Mark Miller, uh, somebody that's been um, um, been been racing at a high level here in, in the country and, uh, and, and globally in, in sedan. So uh, we're going to have those two guys. And then we have a couple of other ones that are already uh, lined up. We're just making sure that the dates are, are working, but I'm hoping to have four straight weeks of driver coaches coming in and talking about how they have used data to help uh, folks uh, get faster. And of course their own motorsports, uh, their own racing, you know, using data to do that as well. Uh, just a whole bunch of different approaches from four, four coaches that we have not had uh, had the use of before here in our webinar. So looking forward to that. I know Thomas is a, Thomas has been chatting back and forth with me. He's really looking forward to joining us here as well. So um, looking forward to that. Um, the data analysis, a bunch of them right in a row coming up. So it'll be a, it'll be a great time. Uh, contact information. Uh, Robbie, there's Robbie's uh, email address, my email address. If we, if we've, if we've mentioned something today that you didn't, uh, didn't fully understand or want to get a little bit more detail on, or you can't find the links, uh, drop us a note. Uh, we'll, we'll get you what you need. Appreciate uh, everybody coming today, especially you, Robbie. I know, uh, you know, you've been, uh, it's that time of year and I know you're super busy and uh, to take a few minutes out of your uh, busy schedule to come join us. I, I, I really do appreciate it. Is, is there anything else you'd like to kind of add as we're on our, on our way out? I can't believe you have, you've only been to two races this year <laughs> i think i i think i hit two in the first week i've only been to one i'm, I'm going to my second to make it even worse right uh, so but uh, to be fair the uh the, the webinars and the the emails uh, support and stuff that i've been doing has been uh, has been keeping me a little bit busy too so so and in my normal 
my normal travel is a lot of uh, on-site seminars and we just can't bring that many people together yet. Uh, we're getting close, I think. So hopefully, hopefully soon I'll be out there, uh, you know, working a, a little bit more, but I am looking forward to Audubon. So well, I just did want to say thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, I, I have a deep passion for, for all of these electronics and, and how you integrate them into a race car. So uh, if there's anything that you guys need, you just feel free to reach out to Roger or myself. We're, we're happy to get you guys taken care of. Or the 800 number if uh, if you can't get a hold of us and you need something even quicker there there's a another great source resource for you so thanks everybody for coming thanks again Robbie for doing this with us uh, looking forward to seeing uh, speaking with Thomas uh, a week from today with with some driver coaching data analysis it's going to be a good time thanks everybody and we'll see you in a week.